Hi guys, Jimmy from Boxing Life and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I just want to talk about, I guess, the heavyweight mess we have at the moment. <laughs> and what could possibly happen out of it. It's, it seems to be kind of coming to fruition in terms of what's going to happen. And that looks like Fury will fight White and Joshua will take the rematch. Now, we can only make assumptions in terms of who's talking the truth. Um, from Eddie Hearn and Fury, uh, and let's be honest, it's you have to take it with a pinch of salt, whatever these guys are saying. You can't take them too seriously. Uh, you know, there's multiple parties involved, and even Usyk's part to mention, you know, to mention them as well. So, you just don't know who's holding up all these talks, and let's be honest, it's all about ego and also the money as well. But I guess let's start with talking about Anthony Joshua and it kind of plays into his hands the most I think out of everyone because he obviously had signed the rematch clause with Usyk and there's a reason why he did that you know after you know obviously after the Ruiz defeat they had had a rematch clause in there which was smart at the time if you think about it and there's a reason why I had it in again against Usyk. It was so, you know, if something was to happen, there was always an opportunity on the table for him to come back. Whether I agree with it or not, you know, if it's a mandatory, I don't think they should be in place. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, this is boxing politics. You can't control it. However, with Joshua, you know, it's the easy option for him to take the 15 million pounds or 20 million dollars whatever it is it's easy for him to do that you know and it give and yeah it might seem logical you know he could technically get a warm-up fight with a new trainer before he then gets a fight with the undisputed champion and that makes sense i completely understand why that is an option however i like the reports that he is going to be taking this rematch with Usyk. I think it shows that he's daring to be great. Win or lose, I think you'll have a lot more respect if he does that, in my opinion. Obviously, you're going to get people saying, oh, he should have taken the $20 million if he loses. Obviously, people are going to say that. But for me, and I think the majority of boxing fans after he's retired and long gone, you know, they'll respect him for taking that rematch. The issue I have around AJ is it's more about his psychology, I guess. And obviously he's bounced back from defeat, so it's not like he becomes a defeated person. He is totally capable of coming back, as we saw in the Ruiz rematch. And even earlier in his career when he lost in the amateurs. However, you know, you can tell just from listening to the interviews, he's a very deep thinker. He maybe overthinks too much. And, you know, they say about the most successful people, they make decisions quickly. And what I'm trying to get to is around the trainer issue, you know. Is he going to stay with Rob McCracken? Is he going to just stick with the team but drop someone? Is he going to get a new trainer completely? Is he going to change the whole setup? There's so many things to consider. It is big decisions, especially if you're wanting to retake your heavyweight belts. And yes, you can think about it for a while, but it's important to think quickly. And I guess the comparison and the difference is him and Tyson Fury. Obviously, Fury used to be with Ben Davidson when he was on his comeback. And after that Otto Wallen fight, it was quite clear, you know, he, he got some advice from his father saying, you know, he needs someone different. You know, someone where Fury is able to be a bit more assertive in the ring, especially with his style to be a bit more come forward. And obviously he'd trained with Emmanuel Stewart back when he was a bit younger. Obviously he had trained in the Klitschko camps as well and had met Sugar Hill Stewart there. So they knew what they were about and they quickly, made pretty much, you know, they were quite quick to change trainer and make the decision. And that is what I'm talking about. It's the kind of the difference you know, yes, it might have not worked out with Fury. You know, Fury could have gotten knocked out by Wilder in the second and even the third fight. He almost did in the third fight. And what would people be saying then? You know, 
but regardless of that, it didn't happen. But I think it just shows you it's more the decision making factor for me. And AJ obviously overthought it. But once again, maybe, you know, this is just me looking from the outside and I don't know what's going behind the scenes. Maybe it's Eddie Hearn that's delaying all this. You know, that's a possibility as well, especially after when they tried to make the undisputed fight last year between Fury and Joshua. And then they obviously, uh, Wilder all of a sudden won his court case and then that fight happened. And it wasted a lot of time for Team Joshua, I guess. So maybe they're playing the trick to them, delaying it for them. And I can understand why you would do that. But it, like I said, as boxing fans, it doesn't help us with the politics. But it happens. You just need to kind of accept it. And people get really wound up by it. But, you know, it is what it is sometimes. And... It's unfortunately people lose interest because of the sport and they keep asking when it's going to happen. Then you get fights that are well beyond their years. You know, think about Pacquiao Mayweather, you know, it's just too late. Think about Kale Brook and Amir Khan, that's just about to happen. You know, it's just, it just dragged on far too long when it should have happened years ago when they're in their primes. And this is the thing, you know, these guys are, you know, they're not getting any younger. They're, you know, early 30s. You know, Usyk's going into his late 30s now. And we want to see these guys in their prime, you know. People will always still pay for these fights no matter what. But as fans, as the hardcore fans anyway, we want to see these fighters in their prime. Because that's what makes boxing great when you get these fantastic fights. And we want to see that. Now, whether he wins or loses the rematch of Usyk, we'll have to wait and see. At the moment... I'm not too sure he will, regardless, but never say never, you know, I thought Joshua was going to win the first fight, like many people did, just due to his size and, you know, his power, you know, I thought he was just too big for Usyk, and Usyk came out and proved everyone wrong for the most part with just his superb boxing ability and movement and positioning. And AJ, you know, he just needs to go for it, win or lose, I think. I think he needs to obviously look to fight in the inside a lot more and try and hold up Usyk, but that's a lot easier said than done. And who's the coach who's going to manage him to do that? You know, we need to... I think he needs to make that decision. You know, he should have made that decision, you know, a couple of months ago. But he is in the position he is now. Maybe this fight will allow him... Maybe because of these delays, it will allow AJ to get enough time to work with a new trainer or even just stay with his team at the moment to work on the tactics, trying to defeat Usyk, you know, in a far more aggressive way by using his power and size. Whether that happens or not, we'll find out, but it'll be interesting to see. But going on to Tyson Fury, you know, I think obviously he's been just calling out people like crazy about, you know, being cowards and Usyk, Joshua and White, but... You, yeah, you just don't know, you know, there's obviously been reports that, you know, you just don't know what to believe really, you know, could it just be a bluff just to make people think, you know, that it's not their side, you just don't know, you can only take things as a pinch of salt really because you just don't know who's telling the truth and that's the frustrating thing as a boxing fan, it's just mixed reports constantly and all we want is these guys to fight, but I understand there's a lot of money involved, and these egos that are involved with these guys are so big that, you know, there's always bound to be problems with the negotiations, it just it is what it is. So, I guess, if the reports are kind of right, you know, it looks like Tyson Fury will fight White, and, you know, I think it is a good fight. I think um, Dillian White does give Tyson Fury some problems, but I also think Tyson Fury gives D Dillian White some problems too. You know, I, I think um, Dilly Dillian White has improved over the years, but there's one thing we know, Dillian White, you know, has been buzzed, has been hurt a lot over his career. Yes, you can make the argument Tyson Fury went down, you know, how many times against Wilder, but he still managed to come back and win those fights, you know, pre you know, pretty much with all the senses, whereas with 
Dillian White, I feel whenever, whenever he gets hurt, you know, he's out cold or he's all over the place. You know, is that is that just years of getting hit constantly? And I think it's due to his style as well. You know, he's, he likes getting up close and getting messy, you know, and he leaves himself open because he gets tired himself by fighting up on the inside uh, and trying to make things messy. And he gets tired himself, which then leads to openings for other fighters to get to him. And I think Tyson Fury's team will know that. Certainly Tyson Fury is just a much better fighter than White. But it will be interesting to see what happens there. I think um Dillian White will like I said, you know, his jab's really good. I think he'll you know, I think he'll be jabbing to the body of Fury constantly. You know, you could tell Fury looked a bit uncomfortable when Wilder was doing that to them in the third fight. And you know, that's definitely an area to try and exploit again, I think, for Team White. See how he reacts again to that. But Tyson Fury's a smart boxer. You know, he's got a great ring IQ. And he's also just, you know, his in his intuitiveness in the ring is just also very good. And that's where I just think he will probably edge it for me. And if anything, he'll make it just as messy for Dillian White. And find the opening when it arrives yeah guys hopefully this mess in the heavyweight negotiations gets wrapped up soon we all love the heavyweight division for the most part you know it's maybe not the most technical but there's always that glamour and hype around it and even the history so yeah guys let me know in the comments below what you think each fighter should do do you think joshua should take the rematch with Usyk? do you think fury Will beat White or does White have a chance against Fury? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.